Hello everyone, welcome to another video by Ketone Academy and today we'll be discussing about how is data sorted, dive into data concepts with Azure Data Engineer. So without any further ado, let's get into this video. When it comes to data, it is a collection of facts which could be in the form of numbers, it could be some description, it could be recorded based on some kind of observation as well. Right. So data structures in which this particular data is organized are very, very important entities. And that is the reason why we have to be sure about which category does our data belong to. Right. So until and unless you're able to classify your data as either structured, semi-structured or unstructured, you will not be able to choose the correct tool. You will not be able to choose the correct service to cater to your data, right? So every entity, right? So each of this is one entity. So let's say this is the customer entity, right? In this case, I have the product entity. So every entity that you are creating, which is basically a storage of your data, it could be you know, uh, the sales order, customer products, which we see right now on the screen. It is a collection of attributes. Right. So what is it? It is nothing but a collection of one or more attributes. When I say customer, it is a customer ID, customer name, first name, last name, email, address, etc. Right. If I come to the semi-structured format, these would be my attributes. Right. If I talk, uh, talk about the unstructured data, I can mark my attributes. This would be my date. This would be my tentative date of delivery. Right. This would be my customer name and such. Right. As we discussed, the three types are seen over here. Structured data, which is nothing but data that is adhering to a fixed schema and you have absolutely no control over it. OK, now one of the major features of structured data is the fact that it is relational in nature. That means you can create relationships between your data, which is stored in the structured data format. Right? When it comes to semi-structured data format, it has information. It has some predefined format as we discussed, but you don't have to stick on it. But when it comes to unstructured data, there is no schema to organize the values. Right? Free form text, videos, images, audio streams are few of which we discussed. Right? How is data stored? Okay, so let's understand about the storage of data. So basically, there are multiple types of formats which you can use to store your data. It could be saved in the form of files or it could be saved in the form of databases. Okay, so we'll see about database as we go ahead. Let's talk about the file formats first. So when I talk about data being saved as file formats, there are three different ways in which you can save them. See, ideally, when will you prefer file format? When your data is unstructured, you will prefer file format. Or let's say semi-structured, you will prefer to save it in the form of file format. But if your data is structured, if there is a relationship that can be created between them, in that case, you would prefer to save it as database, which is the second category which I'm talking about. Let's talk about the files first. So the first category that you see over here is delimited text, right? So when the data is stored in plain text format with specific delimiters, like in this case, what is the delimiter here? It is a comma. Right, so there was a time where you used to call the delimited files as CSV files, comma separated values, right? So this is the value and it is separated by comma. You have name, last name and email. So it's comma separated values. But now the delimiter need not be restricted to just comma. You can have a lot of other delimiters as well. Space delimited file, tab delimited file, colon delimited file. Uh, you know, there are multiple uh, characters or special characters that you can use to separate your columns. Right? And that is what your delimited text file looks like. Now, 
how are you separating the rows from each other columns we understood columns we are separating by using this delimiter in the middle how about the rows in this case what is that is separating my rows from each other it is the new line character that is separating the rows from each other right so i have two things when it comes to delimited text format number one is the field delimiter which is comma in this case number two is the row terminator which is my new line space in this case right so if i have to show you that um talking about storage of data and here it is specifically with respect to the format okay the first one or the first category is files the second category is in the form of databases so when it comes to file you are intending to save either your unstructured data or your semi structured data okay these are the two categories uh, that you will intend to save over here let me just put that down here and here what are the types that we are seeing the first type that we saw was a delimited text fine right as i mentioned what are the two factors that play an important role over here it is one the field delimiter which could not just be a comma there could be multiple other characters that are involved and number two is the row terminator okay the second one let me go back here we just put it down here before we go to the slide the second one is javascript object notation and that's exactly what your json means right so your json files which basically means javascript object notation if i show you the format here is the second category so over here you have the values in the form of key uh, key value format it's a pair first name samir last name nador right is in the form of key value pairs over here it's like a hierarchical document schema which you can use to define the data entities and these are nothing but the objects they have multiple attributes right we already discussed data may have multiple attributes associated with that right and the fact that it allows you to go ahead and keep it flexible makes json one of the most flexible format for both your structured and your semi structured data okay so let me just go back and add it here the third one that we're going to go and see is the xml format which is nothing but your extensible markup language same like your delimited text file and your javascript object notation files xml also lets you save unstructured data and semi structured data and it gives you a predefined schema however it is not very rigid with the schema you can go about and have flexible tags for every single node that you are working with when it comes to excel xml right but the increasing popularity of json is now put xml in a back uh, you know a uh, back seat json has become more popular when it comes uh, when it comes to storing unstructured or semi structured data okay right? the next one is blob the blob format does anybody know the full form of blob binary large objects yes that's absolutely correct it's binary large objects right just put that down here
So when it comes to a blob data storage that you're going to go ahead and look for, it is it is basically saved in the binary format, just like it is written in the name itself, right? So technically, all the blobs are stored in the bits, right? Now, what is the advantage of doing this? You can actually go ahead and save huge volume of data, right? And when it is open, it cannot be read by humans because it's in the form of bits. Unless and until there is an algorithm that is converting the data, you will not be able to interpret the same. All right. Let's go back to the slide and see what we have in store. So blocks are unstructured or semi-structured? Yeah, it will let you store both of them. Basically, this category of files that we see is for both unstructured and semi-structured. Okay, so when it's going to uh, when it's going to come to structure, we would be comparing it with the second one that is for databases. Okay, all right, there you go. This is extensible markup language, and then you have log. Right now, finally, you also have the most recent ones, which are known as optimized formats. Right, see these the first four which have been mentioned over here are something that was traditionally used, right? But then in the latest ones, people always prefer to use optimized formats. Now, what do I mean by optimized formats? See, nowadays data is everything, right? We know that the volume of data is increasing tremendously, right? Having said that, what is the best way to store data? Given the fact that, you know, every organization is going digital. There is so much of data that is there. The, the amount of volume is, you know, uh, increasing at, at an unimaginable pace. So what is happening in this case, if you're going to stick to the traditional way of saving your data, over a period of time, there, was, there would be performance issues, right? In that case, you will have to move to more optimized formats where the same volume of data is saved However, it is saved in such a format that it is occupying lesser space. Like Agro, ORC, Pathkit, etc. These are certain formats that allow you to go ahead and save the same volume of data in a more compressed format. It lets you go ahead and squeeze the data so that the final footprint of the file that you're creating is much smaller than the original format of the data storage. Right, And one of the most uh, popular one is the parquet format, which we'll be seeing extensively as we go ahead. Hey, thank you so much for staying with us till the end of this video. I have something special to share. If you loved our content today, then you are absolutely going to adore what's coming next. We have a free class that's absolutely free. And the best part is it's available for everyone. This class goes in depth into the topics we touched on today, offering you detailed insights comprehensive explanations and even some exclusive content that wasn't covered in this video. All you have to do is just click on the link in the description below and you will be redirected to a page like this. Or if you are just starting out, just type k2anacademy.com slash dp20302. Now all the information inside the class that we will be covering is listed here like the details and our few certified trainees and their achievements and a note from our very own Atul Kumar. Now for registering for the class all you have to do is just select an event date, enter your name, your email, your phone number and click yes save my seat. You will be redirected to a thank you page and you can add this session to your google calendar or your apple calendar. You can also save this link and you can join the webinar by clicking the link here. I promise this is something you don't want to miss. So go ahead, click on that link and step into a world where learning knows no boundaries. Till then, keep enjoying. I'll see you in the next video.